Hey G fans, Steve Blankard here again. Hey, uh, a couple days ago I did a video, uh, it was going to be the wrap up video for my D18 transfer case project, but I thought of something else I wanted to talk to, about, talk to you about a little bit, so I thought I'd share it, so this is kind of a follow up. <clears throat> and this has to do with mating the transfer case and the transmission together. Um, I'm sure some of you have done this, uh, you know, you find, find out how, how difficult it can be or how easy it is, depending on how experienced you are. Since uh, I'm an amateur, this is all new to me, so again, reading up on a lot of things and just some past experiences, I, I want to show you a few things about putting this together. Now, you know how it is, and you follow following instructions in the manual, it makes it sound so easy. You bolt everything together, assemble it, bolt it together, boom. Well, you know how it is. Things rarely go together as smoothly as, as instructions would lead you to believe. So, and this is one of those things that's a little, can be, can be a little bit tricky also. So, um, let me show you a few things here. One, um, <clears throat> the output shaft of the transmission is loose. That's just the design of it. It is held in place by a, uh, by the transfer case. There's a ring in here. I don't know how you can see that, but that's what holds it in place. So right now, if I tilt this transmission back, uh, that whole output shaft could fall out. So you got to be very careful when you have them separated. Now, when I when I've, I've had a piece of wire on here and wired up to the bolts just to keep that in place as I was moving around. I just took this off. <clears throat> now something else I've done is I've made two alignment pins up here. So these go right now in place of the two top bolts. So they're just 3 8 bolts that I've cut the heads off and then I saw little slots in the end for a screwdriver. So when I mate the two together the transfer case can slide up over those pins to hold it, get it, help get it aligned as I bring the two together. And then I can put the lower bolts in and then one at a time I'll take these out and replace them with the bolts. <clears throat> I want to put the bolts in, I'm going to be using some uh, thread sealant on these because a lot of these bolt holes penetrate the case. Not all of them, not this one, not this one, but some of the ones down here penetrate the case and the lower one uh, going into the transfer case does. So if you don't put some thread sealant on it, it's just another potential place for leaks. <clears throat> so um, let's look at the bolts here. So here are, I hope you can see this, I'm trying to get this pointed where you can see. So the bolts here, these are the five bolts. There's two that are one inch and there's three that are, I think they're one and an eighth inch. They're just a little bit longer. The important thing to remember is one of the shorter bolts has to go in this hole here. Because if you put one of the longer ones in, the bolt will hit the reverse idler gear that's right behind that hole. So it's really important that you use one of those shorter, slightly shorter bolts in this hole. Now I think the instructions say to use the other shorter bolt on the other side. I don't see that it makes any difference and looking at Rick Stiver's uh, notes on it, he didn't think so either. But the important thing is to make sure you use the short one in this hole, otherwise the, the, the longer bolt will hit the reverse idler gear inside there. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out, okay, so I've just got the gasket hanging on here right now. Um, I'll take this off and I'll put a coating of gasket sealer on the inside face of the gasket, seat it back up here, and then I'll put a coat on the outside of it before I bring them both together. But uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is, oops, sorry, let's get a little, some light on here. This is the locking plate that locks the reverse idler shaft and the counter shaft in place. And you can see, I don't know how you can see, there's a... These are this is these come in the rebuild kits and it's a it's a rectangular plate but then it has these at the top there's these two a little bit longer extensions that keep the plate from going any further down. The problem with a lot of these these plates that they send in the rebuild kits is the plates are too tall as was this one and uh, what I did is I cut the plate down a little bit and you can see where the gasket face hits. And this is why it's so important. If you have this plate, if it's too long, it'll interfere with that gasket and you'll get leaks. So it's really important to cut these, trim these plates down. I trim this one down and you can see I even cut a little, ground a little curve in it just so it fits the gasket in there. I could have made it even a little shorter. Um, but take a look, if you're re rebuilding your transfer, or your transmission, or even if you're just changing your transfer case, look at that plate. Because uh, a lot of times these reproduction ones that come with these kits are too big, so um, make sure you you make sure you got clearance for your gasket so it seats properly, so the transfer case will seal. Because this is a another one of those great places for oil leaks to occur between the transmission and the transfer case here. So um, 
So I'm getting ready to try and pull these together. I'm working by myself, which makes it a bit more difficult. So I've taken the time to get the transmission leveled on some boards here. And I've got the transfer case set up here, set up on some blocks. I've kind of got it pretty close to level. You can see I got the drum hanging off the edge of my table here. So I've got it pretty close to level so I can bring the two together and uh, hopefully I can get the bolts in and, um, and then I'll replace the alignment pins with bolts. So um, that's where I'm at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video since I can't do this and film all at the same time. Uh, so, and I'll come back to you after I get it, hopefully get it together here and I'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. So, okay, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Hey G fans, I'm back. It's been uh, about 20 minutes, I guess. Uh, and I got the uh, transmission and the transfer case made it together. Uh, everyone, everything went nice and smoothly. Um, the alignment pins worked really good to uh, get the two, the, the two top holes lined up, slid the pins in, uh, and then that allowed me to get the bottom bolts in. Uh, so I, then I replaced the pins one at a time with the bolts, and I used a uh, thread sealant, a Permatex thread sealant, on all the bolts. Uh, well, just about all of them. Some of this one doesn't, but most of them penetrate the case, either the transmission or is one that penetrates the transfer case. So I put sealant on all those, and I use the uh, copper spray on the gasket on both sides. The mating surfaces were in really good shape. They were perfectly smooth without any corrosion or pitting or anything. So for a really smooth surface, I like using this. It's not as messy. If it was a rougher surface, I might have used uh, you know the aviation gasket seal or something. that's a little a little bit thicker. So, uh, so it all went together good. It's all torqued uh, and everything, everything is good. So um, it worked out really well. Now one other thing I wanted to show you uh, over here. Now at this point the next step would be to install the output gear on the shaft here. I know it's dark in there but it goes on that shaft and then I would put the uh, nut and washer on it and torque those. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I I may be getting a, an overdrive unit, and if I get an overdrive, then that will go on in place of this gear. So I'm going to put this on, but I'm just going to put it on loosely and just button it up loosely for right now until uh, I see what's going on. Um, one thing I do want to show you when you when you put this on, you know, you got a big nut here, you got a torque. Well, that shaft, of course, is going to be wanting to spin. So the trick to keep it from spinning. And I took the, the, the uh, shift tower off, is to put it in third gear before you take the shift tower off. So put it in third gear, and then take the sliding gear and put it over against the reverse idler. And basically what you've done there is put it in two gears at the same time. Put it in third gear and reverse at the same time. And that locks the shaft. The shaft is locked now, so now you can go ahead and get that nut and you can torque that nut. And you know, the shaft won't turn because it's locked itself together. Once you get done with that, make sure you take it back out, move that slider gear over, and go ahead and take it out of third gear, put it back to neutral, slide the, uh, the clutch hub back. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's how you tighten that up without it, without it turning. So that's it. Um, it's made it together. Things went really pretty well. Uh, the alignment pins worked really good, so definitely worth, worthwhile taking a few minutes to make, a, make you a set of those. Um, so... Uh, you know, I've tried to put sealant on every single bolt and every gasket and every place where it could leak uh, to reduce the odds of it leaking. I'm under no illusions that it's, that it's going to be entirely leak free, uh, but I'm hoping for it, so we'll, we'll see what happens. So, anyway, that's my uh, next, my last video after the last video. Uh, so, I hope to find this helpful. Um, until I come up with the next project, uh, that's it for now. Y'all take care.